<laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but feeling a little better. With the quick turnaround, how, is treatment almost the most important thing this week, along with mental runs? I mean, it's all important. It's all important, right? Tough, tough week to uh, to get going for a Thursday night game. You know, physically, you got to be able to recover, and then mentally, you're cramming, you know, a full week's worth of, of work into a couple days. So the challenge is, is both mental and physical uh, for myself and the, and the whole team, right? We have to be on top of our plan, know the details inside and out, and then do everything we can to get our bodies ready to go for Thursday night. How has it felt, Ryan, since the game to the game, you know, cause a setback, I guess? Yeah, I was pretty sore after the game, but. Uh, you know, it feels a little bit better today, so hopefully we just keep it going in that direction. How much of a shot in the arm was it for this pass attack going for 255 against the number one pass defense in the league? It was good. You know, I feel like, you know, we left some opportunities out there. So uh, definitely some good things that we can build on. And if we can just clean up some details on some other things, um, you know, I felt like we did some, did some things that can push us in the right direction. So, um, you know, happy for our guys and proud of the way we went out and competed. And I just need to build on it. How much has Austin turned into? a move the chains guy for you in particular on third down. Hey, he's making big plays. You know, I I said it all early in the year, you know, that, that I had a lot of confidence in him and we built that connection, you know, through the spring, through training camp. And then for whatever reason early in the year we just didn't have the connections, you know, or it wasn't the catches, I guess. You know, we uh um felt good going into each game and had a plan to uh, to have him involved and for whatever reason the ball just didn't didn't find him. And um just kind of stuck with it, stuck with our process and and he's done a great job of taking advantage of his opportunities and, and uh, making big plays for us. How about Chig, uh, just his development and his ability to maybe make, make a play when he gets the ball in his hands? Yeah, he's done a, done a great job. You know, I think that for a young player, taking advantage of his opportunity is exactly what he's done. You know, anytime he gets in there and, and has a ball come his way, it seems like he, he does a great job of, of getting open and, and making the catch and then you know, being a tough physical runner once he has the ball in his hands. Rabel's on the verge of getting his 50th win, just would be just the third coach in franchise history to do that. What do you think makes him successful as a head coach? Uh, there's a lot of things, but uh, you know, I think first and foremost, it's a, it's a clear plan and, and clear foundation for the program. And uh, everyone that comes in the building knows what we're about, knows what we believe in. We hold each other accountable. He, he starts that. And um, you know, every day, you know what you're getting. For you, ball security this year has been, has been a big point of emphasis, it seems like, compared to last year. Just what was the mindset coming into this year? Was that one of the main things you were focused on? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, too many turnovers last year and, and looked at them over the off season And, um, you know, some I could do something about and several of them I couldn't. But um, want to control the what you can control and, and uh, you know, be smart with the football and know, know when you have to push the envelope. What do you see out of this Packers defense, especially, you know, yeah, I mean, it's a good defense, top to bottom. You know, you look at the front, they're big, they're physical, they're long on the edges. Um, their backers are fast, they're flying around. Um, you know, Jair Alexander, one of the top corners in the league, veteran safeties. Um, so, you know, you look at the guys they have, they have really good players and, and do a good job in their scheme. So, you know, it's going to be a, a tough day for us. We have to go out and, and execute well. I imagine you pl probably played at every NFL stadium. Is there something special about playing at uh, Lambeau? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I, uh, I've only been up there a couple times, so every time you get up there, you want to take advantage of the opportunity. Uh, it's a special place. You, you kind of feel it driving up to the stadium. Um, definitely one of my favorite places to play. It's cold everywhere this time of year, but I mean, up there especially, it was just like actually looking at the town, so it's going to be below freezing. As a quarterback, what do you do to just stay warm, stay loose, whatever, and then especially dealing with an ankle, how does that affect it? Yeah, I mean, it's just part of uh, playing in the NFL, right? A lot of cold games, and, and this will be one of them. So, um, Make sure you're staying loose, staying warm as, as best you can on the sideline. Uh, as a quarterback, keep the hands somewhat warm and, and uh, be good to go. Anything Beetle. you special that you found works particularly well for you over the years? Uh, hand muffs. <laughs> nothing, uh, nothing too crazy. I don't have any uh, special tricks or anything like that. Um, but uh, what I have found, it works for me. Do you wear a glove on the left hand? I don't recall. I, no, I, I try not to wear I like to feel the ball. You know, Some guys love the gloves. Um, for me, it, I, I don't like not being able to feel the ball, and uh, especially on the throwing hand. Do you ever feel like you just want to get the hell out of there, or when the game starts, the, the temperature? What do you mean? I don't <laughs> know. It's, like, it's so cold. I just want to go inside. <laughs> no, no, you don't. I don't think about it too much. You know, some guys think about it. For me, you know, you go to the sideline, you get a coat and a heated bench. You know, it's and when you're out on the field, you, the last thing you're thinking about is the temperature. You know, so um, yeah, for me, it's it's not that big of a factor.
Ryan, have you ever been a guy that has a some you know flip uh, card on the wrist or anything like that? I, I can't remember you playing with one here, and I don't think you had one when you were in Miami. Uh, is it just it just something that you prefer not wearing, or is it just not the way you operate? I have a couple times in my career. You know, I think back. I think last year we went to Seattle. We we wore one. Um, but not too many times. You know, I like to, to be able to hear the call, visualize it in my head as it comes in. It just helps me build the picture of, of what's going on. You know, when I hear it and I have to build the picture of, of the play in my head, it helps me, you know, communicate with my guys and as opposed to, you know, reading a line on a, uh, on a wristband. So, you know, there's different ways to do it. Everyone likes something different, but that's the way that I feel like works best for me. You've had a chance to know Aaron very well over the years, and if not, just as a player, are you impressed with how well he's been able to play and how well he's been able to play for so long? Yeah, I don't know him well. Interacted a few times with him over the years. Uh, he's been very, very nice to me, obviously. You know, one of the best to ever do it. Um, amazing career. I don't know what year he's in right now, but a lot of them, and they've all been pretty good. Health, getting that stuff right. How much did that help you during the injury, kind of being able to lean on what you worked on over the offseason? Yeah, it's tough. You know, being injured is, is not where you want to be, being out, you know. So um, definitely had to work through that process. And, um, and uh, you know, when you come back, you want to be able to, to pick up where you left off. You guys always lean on, on Derek pretty hard. But last game, I think you threw 36 times and ran only 23. You showed that the passing game could, could carry you to victory. Yeah, like I said, I think we did some good things in, in the passing game. You know, um, obviously Derek had some huge runs for us, and and he will continue to do that. So um, every game is going to turn out a little bit differently. We're just going to try to do what it takes to win. It seems like every time Shig touches the ball, what, twenty yards or so, how much uh, you know more excited is that a, is is that a legit stat or? It, it's, it's right. <laughs> right. It, it, okay, all right. Don't close. Check the you you would know. You would know more than me. I don't. I don't know. Three point one yards per catch. Oh, there we go. There it is. Right around twenty. But Nailed it. Anyway, how much better would it be for you guys to get him more touches? I know that's something that you know apparently you guys are working on, but what will it take to get those touches for him? Yeah, every every game plan is a little bit different. You know, Chig's done a good job of taking advantage of his opportunities. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, he's he's getting himself open, and when he does get the ball in his hands, he's he's doing something special with it. So, um, you know, if he continues to get those opportunities, I have confidence that he'll take advantage of it. Beyond just the catches that he had, how much did having trailing back and a little bit of an element of speed that he brings on the outside help maybe open up some things in other places? Yeah, definitely nice to have him back. Um, you know, he obviously got the ball in his hands a couple times. The one on a, a quick throw to the right, I remember he just got the ball in his hands, was able to get, you know, 10-plus yards on a, on a very quick throw. So um, excited to have him back and just want to keep, you know, working him in and, and uh, getting the ball. Check in on Ben uh, during the course of the week, and if he's not able to go, just how much of an adjustment is you to, for you to be with that your start center? Yeah, you know, hopefully Ben's able to go. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, talked to him this morning. He seems to be doing much better this morning. So thankful to hear that. Um, you know, Ben's uh, you know such such a good friend and a, and a great teammate, and does a lot for us on this team. So um, you know, if he's not able to go, confident in, in our guys up front that they'll be able to to pick up the slack. But you know, definitely want to have Ben in there. We got little Trey and big Trey. Which one's who? Figure it out. Tennessee, Tennessee boys, UT. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Mike. Uh, Mike, with all the changes. It's a nice jacket. You with the AP? That's right here. <laughs> For a couple days. Uh, with the changing phases that you've had on defense, the, what that unit has been able to do, no matter who's on the field, week in, week out, how impressive has that performance been, this, this, uh, these, especially these last six games? Well, they play hard. They play extremely hard. They, um, you know, if they give up a play, they've, they've figured out how to go down and get stops and, and been opportunistic with, with turnovers, um, stopped giving up, you know, a lot of explosive gains. So those are those are things that'll help you no matter who's out there, um, you know. And like Kev, you know, KB said, and I, you know, I appreciate everybody recognizing it. As guys get opportunities, and you know, it, it's cool to see them take advantage of them, and then you know, they'll, they'll hopefully earn more opportunities and, and be ready to go uh, if we need them. With that on the defense, you know, yards are being given up, but it seems like you guys hamper down in the red zone. What has been the key for you guys to you know, find that success there? I mean, I think just being consistent and, um, you know, not panicking and, and guys being able to defend the goal line and, you know, stopping the run, let, not letting teams uh, run it in, um, you know, challenging down there at the goal line, all, all those things that we've been working on in the offseason. 
Um, you know, taking care of the quarterback. The quarterback, I don't think, you know, hasn't hurt us. You know, I mean, where do you see some of these play extensions? That's usually where, you know, when things break down, um, guys are able to scramble and, and, and get in and, you know, get into the middle of the defense and then throw it or they're on the edge. So, you know, just have to continue to try to, to, to be great down there when they get it down there. With all the changes you've had to make in the secondary this year, how good has it been to have a guy like Bayard who has so much knowledge of your system and all to kind of settle everything down and control everything? Back yeah, down? you know, very valuable just as far as the consistency, uh, the communication, um, you know, does a great job of trying to spread, spread our message. And, and, you know, there's a handful of guys that we've, you know, been together uh, with us here for, you know, four or five years. So uh, that's invaluable. Um, but it's, it's a new challenge this week. Everybody that's going up there that'll play in the game, you know, they'll have to be ready. It'll be, you know, I think with this offense and with Aaron, it's just everything so much faster and so much quicker uh, happens. And, um, you know, you can see they're, they're willing to move the ball down the field. They hit some, hit some shots last week. They connected on to help them win. How much is football, a team's football culture in general and, and your culture specifically kind of built and enhanced by that? The closed circle. It's just you guys. It's just the 69 guys and the coaching staff. You've got that message on the door going out about keeping it in house. Well, I mean, we try to. I mean, I would to that point or that question about keeping it in house. It's like, you, you know, we try to operate like a family, and we try to, you know, put a lot into it. We, we spend time, you know, building relationships, um, trying to, you know, take care. We got so many people in place that can that can help guys off the field. Uh, and, and help them deal with things that they're working through, whether it's family or anything else. And, and so I don't necessarily want a lot of people to know about my family, so I wouldn't expect you know, us to, to try to share a lot of that news. That's, that's stuff that's come with a lot of time and effort uh, and trust. And so it's not like it's some big secret, but you know, I'm in a valuable position to understand that everybody's got stuff going on, guys come to me or I'm aware of stuff, you know, so that's, that's something that we hold um, pretty near and dear. Now, as far as the culture, you know, the, the leaders are the ones that you know, ultimately define what that is, define what that culture is. Uh, the culture hopefully drives uh, the behavior and how we act, how we respond, you know, and then ultimately you're, you're looking for results. And so, I think the consistency has been been fantastic. Like the message to Kevin, you know, about Kevin is that you know, we've had a lot of those guys, not a ton of them, but you can just say like Derek and and Ben and Kevin uh, and Jeffrey and and just you know, there's a handful of guys that have been here uh, for the entire time that have kind of held us together when um, there's been so much turnover. Is there Degree of camaraderie that just comes out of it naturally when you're together that way. I, I think so. You know, I mean, I think we travel. We spend a lot of time together. I mean, these guys make commitments um, to to do their job. Uh, you know, be away from their family. Some guys have have children in other cities. Um, they have significant others in other cities, and it's a you know, I appreciate the, the commitment that they make and each and every week. So everybody's trying to do that, and they. I think they lean on each other. I think they understand that they're all kind of going through the same thing, that you know, whatever their feelings are off the field or their issues are off the field, that you know, they're not alone in, in what they're dealing with. And then hopefully there's a lot of football that's being uh, talked about as well, which I think that brings you together. What's the key to substituting efficiently on defense, giving Rodgers yeah. pension for getting the, the penalty? Carefully. There? I think that's probably the best word is you have to be very, very careful and selective and um, – you know, that, that's, they're a very in-tune group and unit with that. Uh, and, and, you know, give them credit. They, they try to take advantage of, of everything that they, you know, every edge that they can find. T.J. Dillon's a, a huge dude. Do you think that you, do you expect them to lean on him, especially in a short week? Well, I mean, they've leaned on him and Jones. Those guys are, you know, have the bulk of, of the targets, whether they're handing them off to him or throwing. And obviously, um, you know, the size of the receivers, I think. But I, I wouldn't imagine them changing. I mean, they have run it for over 400, 200 yards against four opponents, uh, won three of those games. And 
Uh, th those are impressive numbers. How have they been so effective from what you've seen on film over the last month? How have they been so effective with the run game? Um, I think the O-line's coming back t together. You know, I think they've got a group in there that they like. They have one of the best blocking tight ends in, in the league, you know, Mercedes Lewis. The backs run hard. And um, as always, when, you, when you're hitting those explosive gains down the field, receivers, you know, have to, have to be willing to go do their job and, and find somebody to block. So that, that's the combination. I mean, they have, they have really good backs, and you know, they mix up the scheme. They, they run inside. They, they run outside zone. They you know, work toss crack. So... They, they keep you guessing and keep you defending it. Lafleur said earlier. had a huge game uh, this past weekend. Just what do you see out of that rookie? Well, I think uh, more comfort level. I think that there's a definite skill set. There's a size. There's a speed. You know, they've handed it to him. Um, you know, in motion, they, they've got him on catch and runs, and they've you know worked him down the field. So, um, look, looks like he should be coming into the game with a lot of confidence after Sunday. Lafleur said earlier this week that he saw a lot of similarities in their run scheme versus your run scheme, specifically with outside zones. Is that something that you see? Uh, and if so, how might that help you in containing them, knowing how good and how much they rely on the run? Well, we'll have to be prepared for whatever it may be. I mean, I think that, you know, people that study this scheme and, and kind of work towards it as – as what they see as their scheme, there's, you know, there's landmarks, there's tracks, there's combination blocks. So, you know, I'm sure that's all very similar. Um, they, they probably do it out of the, the gun more, more than we do. Um, but, you know, everything is going to have a little bit of wrinkles. And, you know, whether we have knowledge of it, I, I think we still have to go out and, and tackle. You know, we've got to avoid the biggest thing is, is not putting ourselves in position to have one-on-one -on -one tackles with, with Jones or Dylan. You know, whether that's or the receivers out on the perimeter, you know, those are like long handoffs as efficient as they are at the at the run reliefs. Being the road team on a short week, a lot more challenging in terms of schedule and preparation and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, just glad they're not coming off a bye, I guess. You know, so we'll go on the road. Wait, wait. What's your feeling about the status of penalties? It seems like I, I haven't looked game by game, but I know you're not ranked around the league or us. You. Um, you know, we've avo again. I, I, I think that there's been some ones that that we could have avoided. I would have loved to be able to, you know, the the operation penalties. You know, I mean, lining up offsides, um, jumping. You know, th those are. You know, I think you know it could end up costing you. you know, I think we've done a nice job of not doing the dumb stuff that that hurts the team. The things that are glaringly after the play, 15 yards. You know. Maybe, I don't know, we can debate whether Sam was pulled into the quarterback and I mean, still they put a lot of responsibility on that player. Um, I, I, would, I would like it cleaned up, but I don't think it's, you know, I mean, if we had a team that was just swinging and punching and the second guy in and, you know, that would be disappointing. So, yes, uh, there's some things that we would like to not have, but also – just looking on a, on a positive note, I don't think we have a team that's trying to do dumb stuff to hurt the team, hit a guy, you know, five yards out of bounds late. He's got a body listed as a full participant yesterday in your estimated report. Is he looking good for Thursday for you? He was he was dominating in that walkthrough yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> on the show with that with Ben Jones, though, this is a guy that you see plays almost every single game. Uh, with the concussion listing, is that something that happens in the game? That that happened in the game. Yep, that occurred in the game. So we'll, we'll keep you keep you updated on Ben. Obviously, um, any any um, anytime somebody's in the concussion protocol, we treat that uh, with the utmost respect. And Ben seems to be feeling better, and you know saw him this morning. So that's all positive. You know, we'll update. You know, I mean, we signed a, a kicker to the practice squad, so you know these decisions can come down to the game um, as it relates to Thursday. You know, being able to bring guys up on on the day of the game because you're playing on Thursday. Conversation with Caleb like you've had some tough ones with him dealing with his injuries since he got. Well, just you know, I mean, everybody's disappointed. You know, came to work every day with great attitude, and you know, hopefully we can we can get uh, he can get healthy, and then we'll reevaluate where things are. And you know, just you know, unfortunate. What, what are the challenges, I guess, on a, on a short?
short week uh, trying to get your group ready to go. Yeah, you know, trying to give the guys uh, the looks they need, you know, and realizing that you can't do it at full speed and, and not going to be able to get uh, close to game simulated action. But uh, the mental preparation, right, and then pairing that with the physical recovery is that, that balance. So I think we've done a nice job thus far of diving into the game plan, having the discussions we need to about the if this, then that's. And, uh, you know, the guys have been working hard to get physically back. Are the meetings that take place on Thursday that wouldn't normally take place if you're on a, a Sunday or a Monday night game there too? Where you, on, you on game day, you mean? Yeah, on yeah, game day. yeah, you definitely need to, you know, take advantage of all the time that you have leading up to the game. And, and maybe it's trimming the game plan a little bit with things that, you know, you don't feel totally comfortable with or, or maybe it's adding a little tweak to something. Uh, so we certainly are going to take every, uh, every hour that we have. For you guys last week when, when Derek's kind of being held down a little more than normal, how, how good to see the passing game kind of operate independently of what your rushing attack normally is? Yeah, you know, I thought we did some good things. I thought we also left some stuff on the on the table, you know, and uh, I think that as we get back into the flow of things, getting Traylon back, getting Ryan back, uh, you know, the, building that chemistry and, and that expectation of where guys are going to be, uh, you know, I think we took a step in the right direction in some areas, but we left some meat on the bone as well. Where, where were those areas that you felt like, okay, there, there could have been more there? Yeah, I thought we had some ops on third down that we missed, you know, a, you know, a couple opportunities to move the chains and sustain drives and get into more plays. And, um, you know, for a variety of reasons, we just didn't convert uh, at the rate that we expected to. Where's trailing in terms of being able to be used in any situation, and I guess in more situations too? Yeah, I think he's coming along. You know, he got his sea legs back a little bit last week and, uh, you know, was able to obviously have a, a little bit of production, a couple targets there. So, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be a process getting him back to full strength. But, you know, I think that he's on the right, uh, on the right path. Where would you say he is on that? Like, I don't know if there's a scale. But obviously, you, you guys talk about Westbrook and Kene, right? Now, you, know, you put him in any position, any point, you can plug him in and he can play. So where would you, if you could try to put Traylon into that context of where he is right now? Yeah, you know, we don't do much about uh, comparisons around here. But what I'll say is that they're two totally different players. You know, Nick's had... Uh, a lot of experience and, and has been forced into practice in a lot of different uh, roles. You know, I think Traylon's worked very, very hard to, uh, you know, to master his spot. And I think that as he continues to, you know, get his legs back underneath him, he'll be able to uh, be moved around a little bit. Any greater me measure of satisfaction when a flea flicker or something comparable works the way it did as opposed to any other play you call during a game? I had a lot of satisfaction on that working simply for, uh, you know, having our defenses back. Man, they played outstanding. Our defensive staff has done such an awesome job and, and the way that they've sustained through the, the bumps in the road they've had. Uh, that was a joyful moment for me just in that we, we put some points on the board and, and finally answered the bell a little bit when they were battling. So uh, it doesn't matter if it's a flea flicker, a, a long run, or uh, – Broken play, whatever it is, if, we, if we're helping the defense out, uh, you know, I feel like we're doing our part. The first half carries for Henry, that was unusually low. Was that flow of the game, or what was behind, you know, him getting so few carries that early? Yeah, a little bit flow of the game. You know, the, the first down production uh, wasn't where it had been in, in the previous weeks, you know, which caused us into a couple more throwing situations, and then obviously not converting some of those early third downs that I mentioned. Uh, took away from just getting into a rhythm in those drives. Uh, you know, I think the more carries you get him in a drive, the stronger he gets. And so that's why it's even more important that we uh, pick up those third downs we have the opportunity to and, and get him three, four, or five opportunities, uh, you know, within a drive. So uh, obviously that's that's the mission, that's the goal. Uh, we just didn't do that well enough uh, early last game. And you, you've talked in the past about, being dedicated to the run and dictating to the defense how things are going to go. Is it tough to balance? Like, how do you balance that as opposed to down and distance and, and you know, just that equation? Itself? I think you need to take multiple things into account. You know, there are some things in the passing game that once we saw how they were playing uh, with a couple of personnel groupings, we, we thought, you know, we'd have a couple opportunities there. And so taking advantage of those opportunities, uh, we felt was our best way of, of moving the football. And, uh, you know, I think we did some some good things in the past game. As I said earlier, I, I just think we left a little bit of meat on the bone. Shane, that your group was able to play, it was just maybe continuity with so many guys out, and, and how difficult is that? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm probably guys that stepped up. They went out there and made some plays. Um, I think it's a credit to them, staying engaged, 
um, being ready for when their opportunity ar arose and they took advantage of it. Um, a lot of credit to the coaches as well, right? Getting those guys ready, spending time with them, making sure they're all on the same page. Um, so it's it's uh, comforting, right? When you got pieces that can roll in there and play and hopefully as we start getting back healthy, it just provides some depth for us as we go through the season because we know we're going to be dealing with stuff throughout. How much part of your job now is looking at the, checking in with the guys, trying to figure out whether they're going to be ready? Yeah, I mean, uh, you have to. Like, I, we get updates every, every day from Todd and from Braves and kind of see where it's at. And, I mean, it's a lot of these guys is day by day, you know. So we got to plan accordingly, and we got to make sure everybody's ready. We talk about it every week. Like, there's no telling what's going to happen throughout the course of the week. So everybody that's in that meeting room better be ready to play come Sunday you're or upset, Thursday. I'm sorry. You're upset by the neutral zone stuff and the penalties. Yeah, it cost us. It did. Uh, I mean, the, the offsides are inexcusable. we got to be able to line on sides. I mean, that's day one football. Um, and then the roughing the passer call extended that drive. So it did. It, it, it resulted in three points for him, ultimately. So just things we got to clean up. And then, I mean, I hate to reference it, but the Kansas City Chiefs are going to the Super Bowl a few years ago, and D Ford's offsides on a – on a fourth down, they end up scoring a touchdown, right? And they get knocked out where who knows what happens, weaves offside, jumps offside on that fourth down. So you never know uh, when those errors are going to come back to bite you in the butt. Hey, what's the key when you have so many guys missing and you're able to plug in guys and kind of maintain a certain standard of play? Well, how, do you, how do you pull that off? Yeah, I think, uh, I think our leadership's really good from the players. I think we have really good uh, leaders on our side of the ball in terms of Jeff. And KB, obviously, and some of these other guys that are kind of growing into more lead, David Long, right? Um, so I think they've kind of established a culture over there, right? Where they, anybody's expected to go in, and we got a standard that they got to play up to, right? Regardless of anything else, scheme, how many snaps you're getting. Like when you're on the field, we expect guys to play hard, we expect them to fly around, and we expect them to be able to execute with details and fundamentals, right? Regardless of who it is. So. To Aaron Rodgers and what he does, that back shoulder throw, he's one of the best in the league with that. What is it that makes that so effective and so good? Yeah, it's tough to defend, right? Like, if they're out in, out in front of you, they're going to throw it deep, and Watson's going to catch it over his shoulder like he did the other day. Or if they feel like you're on top, I think they got a good connection there where they both are on the same page and understand based on where the defender's at, where that ball's going. So we just got to be on body and be able to recognize it, hopefully, and play back through and, and stay on body throughout throughout those vertical routes, whether they keep going vertical or whether they break it off. Do you enjoy the part of the game that's kind of the, the year-long build of camaraderie between the staff, the <coughs> players, and kind of the tight, uh, secretive almost kind of element that seems so important? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, a big thing for us throughout the season is, especially as you're getting new pieces in, it's about those relationships. And those relationships get stronger the more you're around guys, the more you're able to talk about things other than football, right? So I think the closer you are in any sport, the better you're going to be. I mean, all the relationship stuff comes into play. Like, you're trusting the guy next to you on every single play. Like, it's not about one guy. There's 10 other guys that got to make things work. So um, that's a huge part of it. And uh, I think we've done a really good job of that defensively. Even with the new pieces coming in as they have, I think they've those guys have really bought in. And again, the leaders have taken those guys under their wing and got them ready and got them adjusted to our culture. How often are you reminding guys this week, if you're subbed out, run to the sideline? Yeah, I mean, it's important. Like, he, he's looking, he's he's checking to see what you're doing. Um, so we got to be on our game. I got to be on my game just in terms of personnel substitutions, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, you, you got to be aware. I mean, you got Minnesota early in the year. They were in the huddle. They huddled up, and he peeks over and see Minnesota sub late, and then he just fires them to the ball, and they snap it. So, I mean, he, he kind of got us in 2020 a little bit too. So, got to be prepared for it. How much more do they emphasize the run than like, a lot of teams that you see in their schedule, and how difficult is that run game to stop? Yeah, I mean, you have four games over 200 yards, you're doing something right, right? I think their O-line's very athletic. I think their backs are really, really good backs in this league. They're both a little, they're obviously different. Um, but they're both really good in their own right. They both have the ability to make you miss. Um, obviously, with Dylan, he can run you over. Like, we're going to have to get hats to the ball. To ask one guy to tackle these backs, not going to be good for us. So we're going to have to find ways to get hats to the ball. Um, I think Matt does a good job. They're, they're creative with r their run game, do a lot of different things. Um, so we just got to be ready to go, and it's going to be a big challenge for us.
the game, just uh, he got an opportunity and seemed like he took advantage of it. How yeah, do, how he, do you like how he did? He really did. Um, you know, when guys step up and, and have that opportunity to go and help the team win games, um, it has been great. And uh, we've been looking to have CJ up you know, for quite some time, and he's really did well in practice, and he finally got that opportunity, and he took advantage of it. What makes you comfortable in Josh Lambeau if he needs to be the guy Thursday? Yeah, I mean, I've worked with Josh beforehand uh, when we were with the Chargers together. And, uh, you know, Josh for four years uh, was over a 90% field goal um, career kicker right there. So, um, you know, he had one bad year um, last year. But, uh, you know, he's a professional. He's done it before in the past. He's kicked up in Lambeau. So, um, you know, having a guy that has some experience, um, if he's called upon, great. Um, if not, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Week. I mean, you just see what Randy can do and then make a decision from there? Sure, yeah. I mean, Randy's day by day, and we'll see what he can end up doing. And if he can't go, then fine. You know, we'll end up, you know, bringing Josh up. But if not, we'll, we'll see what, what happens. How many times was Randy's situation on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, we found out, um, you know, during the warm-up, and uh, Randy was honest with us and said, hey, listen, um, you know, I felt something, and, you know, that honesty obviously helps us out because then we can start preparing a little bit quicker, um, you know, and talking to some guys and talking to Stonehouse. Hey, man, we need you to go and get some kickoffs and things like that. So, um, you know, with him getting injured at that warm up or feeling something, um, you know, it's always interesting because Ryan's a guy that it doesn't matter. You can just tell him to do something and he's fine with it. And that's what we end up doing. We said, hey, we need you to do some kickoffs. And he said, no problem. And he obviously did a really good job for us. How many times have you watched that Dylan Cole head back since uh, Sunday's game? Well, we watched it one time. That's what we told Dylan. He could have one opportunity to show it in front of the team, uh, which, you know, obviously our guys were excited about it. But then we told Dylan it was time to move on. And we'd like to have him have another hit like that this, this upcoming week. So you sh he showed it in front of the team? Well, we showed it in our special teams meeting. What kind of reaction did it get? Oh, you get the oohs and the ahs and all that other stuff. And, uh, you know, we, we like, obviously, those type of big plays, and our guys get excited. Everyone's emotional about it. Um, but Dylan knows, and the rest of our team knows, we, he gets that one opportunity. He took advantage of it. And if he gets another one this next game, he's got to do the same thing.